Um, and what I'm going to be taking you through is what it takes for the industry to be able to embrace all these technological, technological developments and particularly digitization. It's only if we move to a world of offers and orders, and I'll tell you what this is about in a few more minutes, that you can embrace this fully. You cannot do it with today's technology that airlines use, which is decades old, if not half a century old. <coughs> so, last year, some of you remem may remember that we presented to you this initiative, this program, the Modern Airline Retailing Program. And it's through this program that we're embarking the industry on this journey to what we call 100% offers and orders, which is the only way for our members, for the airlines, to be truly customer-centric to get closer to the experience customers have on a pure, real, retailing, online uh, experience. There are three pillars to it, selling with offers, fulfilling with orders, and digital identity. I'm going to take you through each three very, each three very quickly, uh, see how we've progressed since last year. But just before that, I thought you might be interested in a little uh, timeline as to what we've been through to put things into perspective. So you've all booked a ticket, haven't you, right? You've all made a reservation to fly one day. Well, believe it or not, for that PNR, the passenger name record, it dates back 60 years. And it's not changed in the last 60 years. Okay? That technology has not changed. 30 years later, the airlines did what was a revolution at the time, electronized the paper ticket process. That took 14 years. A few years after that, we electronized the electronic miscellaneous document. Because when you buy something other than a flight, you need this document called an AMD, which is digitized to better sell ancillaries. And then, <clears throat> a few years later, we introduced the NDC standard. And I'm just going to pause here for one second. New distribution capability was introduced. The reason was simply that until then, or until today, the technology that powers the way airlines are able to sell through travel agents in particular is Edifact technology. It's 40 or 50 years old. And what it means is that when an airline has a business class seat to sell or whatever product or service, the only way the travel agent can materialize it, access it, it's through an alphanumeric code. So imagine, if you had to sell a sofa or a pair of socks, but as a seller, all you had to reference in front of your customer was an alphanumeric code, it'd be a little bit frustrating. And it wouldn't help your process, and it wouldn't make you very customer-centric. So that was NDC, what was NDC is designed to do. Uh, four years later, we introduced one order. You heard June refer to orders earlier as well, and I'll come back to that a little bit later. And then during COVID, there was an acceleration, the whole digitization, particularly this journey to retailing. And here we are today in 2023, in the scope of this modern retailing program towards 100% offers and orders. So you can see there's a massive need for at least some kind of modernization here for our industry to keep up to pace with everything else that's been going on around us. So now... Back into this first pillar. So this is all about giving customers more transparency, access to more capabilities and products through the travel agent channel so it can catch up with the technology that's evolved on the airline websites, which evolved much faster. There's been a gap between the two. <clears throat> so this is what NDC enables in particular, to get customers closer to that retailing experience when selling through travel agents. And it's the most mature of the three pillars I talked about. And I'll just show you here a few just press cuttings that just show what's been happening over the last few months. Just lots of announcements. So it's not only airlines who are embarking on the journey, but it's also technology providers and travel agents as well. Things are moving. There's, there's momentum. And there's even one quote here from one of uh, your media colleagues uh, describing some of the benefits that some of the customers are already seeing thanks to some of the changes they've been making. Now the second pillar. Remember, the first pillar is about fulfilling, about <coughs> uh, selling with offers. The second pillar is about orders. <coughs> and here we go. I talked about the PNR, this reservation. I talked about the tickets. I talked about the EMD. This is about using the one order standard, which is about bringing these three artifacts together into one single reference so that when the customer buys something through a travel agent or through the airline, it's just one single record, just like when shopping through an Amazon. So let me just go back to explain to you where we are today. <clears throat> you see what these things are? Yeah, you can see on the left-hand side, the booking. This is the PNR that dates back to 1964. Now, <clears throat> you see on the left here, there's a little uh, five, six-digit code. 
When you've bought a trip, you've received that email. How often have you had that five-digit code? Sometimes it's an airline code, sometimes it's what you call a GDS code. That's what you've booked. And when you actually pay, you get the other document here on the right, which is the ticket. It's got 15 digits on the bottom right. So that's what you paid. And then, as I said earlier, if it's not the flight and it's uh, at lounge access or an ancillary, a seat, for example, you get this other document, which is an END. So no wonder. When you want to change, add, remove, or if there's a disruption, it gets rather clunky yeah, to, bring, to resynchronize all these components. So the whole idea behind this one aura is to say, well, why can't we do just like any online retailer? And Amazon, for example, have just one reference, just like this. So instead of having three artifacts, numbers you can't make you know what to do when you're asked to put in this, this number or this number, you've just got one single reference, order confirmation, one service can be a flight, one service can be the seat you booked, and the one can be the lounge, etc. This is what one order is about. This is about moving to the world of offers and orders, bringing all these three artifacts that are decades old into one single reference, just like any retailer. But there's a challenge. This requires a massive change across the whole airline uh, structure. It impacts commercial, it impacts IT, it impacts finance, and even the ground operations as well. Because you're combining your tickets, P&Rs, and EMDs into one single record. A lot of work needs to be done, which is why last year, we announced the creation of a consortium of 12 airlines airline groups. These are airlines who said, yes, we're already pretty advanced on the journey to airline retailing, for NDC in particular. We're already seeing some benefits. We can see this end vision of 100% offers and orders, getting all these artifacts into one single order as well. We're ready to invest time, energy, resources to work with IATA for the benefit of the broader industry to accelerate the journey. So this consortium's already delivered, well, quite a few components. I'll just share three here. One, it's put together a business case, uh, <clears throat> a generic business case that each airline can use individually to work out, you know, what are the different levers I can consider to drive value when moving on this journey. And this is available on our website. Also, it put together what we call the reference architecture. It's a set of business capabilities an airline needs in its IT to be able to operate in this new world of offers and orders just like any retailer, no longer bespoke architecture. The benefit of that is that all the airlines have a similar end uh, architecture that they can engage with the technology providers about so that everyone kind of converges in the same direction, which will help speed things up, make it more cost effective, and drive more competition as well because it's much more visible and everyone's buying into that same direction. And last here, it would be so easy if we could just flick a switch tonight, get rid of these PNRs, these tickets, these EMDs, flick another switch tomorrow, and be in a world with just a single order. But the transition is very, very complex. It takes time. So the consortium did some work here also to help the airlines look at some areas they could consider uh, to move ahead. But the other very part of good news is in this piece of work, we had 15 technology providers, some of the usual suspects in this area of travel, but also some uh, <coughs> less usual suspects come and join the journey with us who signed off this piece of work and expressed their commitment to the airline to invest on this journey. And at our symposium in Chicago last month, several technology providers announced they're already investing in this journey. So the journey has begun. Now, <coughs> move on to this uh, third pillar, which is digital identity. So Ewan explained how that can drive a seamless experience from a customer point of view which is really great, and I'm really looking forward to this coming into practice, certainly for my own travels as well. But on the business side as well, it has an impact. I'm not going to get into technical details, but in the world of offers and orders, the world of NDC, the airline takes control of its offer, constructs the offer itself, which gives it more agility instead of the GDS constru constructing the offer. And at the time, when the GDS acts as that central role, it also acts as the point of contact for all the partners who work with the airline in terms of authenticating and identifying. So in this world of offer and orders, where this intermediary no longer carries out that role, the airline will have to identify the partners with which it does business. And it will be able to do that thanks to digital identity as well. IATA is going to be setting up a platform of digital credentials that enable them to identify their partners. So great, it's a good technical thing, it's cool. But what it does mean, it means that for travel agents, to be able to be onboarded, which means to be able to 
be recognized and work with the airline, it'll be a matter of days, whereas today it takes several weeks to do that. So my last uh, <coughs> point I want to talk about is um, payment. Uh, Nick alluded to it in the survey. You know, a third of the respondents said they want more flexibility. Also, what we heard is that, twin, well, we didn't hear it because Nick didn't say it, but it was in the survey, is that tw in 25% of the cases when customers wanted to buy add-ons after the ticket, you know, a seat, a bag, a lounge, the payment didn't, didn't go through for lots and lots of reasons. And imagine as a customer, when it happens to you, you ah, and right at the end of the process, it doesn't work, you get really annoyed. But so's the airline because you wanted to buy something because you saw value as a customer and the airline didn't get the revenue. So it's very, very frustrating. So payment actually cuts across the three pillars of this program. And we put together a piece of work, a program of work to help look into this. And we're looking at uh, five different areas in payment. One is to make it easier for the customer, to secure a preferred method of payment for the customer at every touch point. It takes time, it's very complex uh, to put together to um, make new methods of payment available to enable split payments that Nick referred to. In some parts of the world, this is very, very important. Uh, to be transparent with payment fees as well. Just again, transparency. And here also, we will be putting in place a new standards to support these developments. So, <coughs> just to close before we have the questions, because uh, someone removed my, my last slide that would have given me the little hint to uh, <coughs> close, just say that the industry is ready for this journey to modern retailing. There's a massive momentum on moving to offers where the airline takes control, can push more information out to the customer. When it comes to orders, there's definitely momentum from the consortium airlines, and I said these technology providers who are already investing. And this is ever so important because customers want the agility they can find on all the retailing websites, all the retailing experience they have outside. They want to see that with the airlines. But again, as I said, the good news is the train has left the station and things are moving. Thank you.